What purpose will it serve to die? We are creatures of duty, you and I. Just one more duty to perform. Welcome back, fellow space explorers and Trekkies! Today, we'll be diving deep into the fascinating world of the Romulans to uncover the mysteries of their species. While Starfleet's relationship with this enigmatic race has been marked by secrecy and intrigue, there's one thing we can't deny. Their fascinating anatomy, physical traits like pointed ears and ridged foreheads definitely make the Romulans stand out as a species. On the surface level, they seem like just any regular species in the galaxy, but digging deeper helps us uncover quite a few strange mysteries about them. What makes them tick? Our mission is to find the truth. So, let us journey through Romulan anatomy, from dissection to biological exploration, to understand the evolutionary adaptations that allow them to thrive in space. So grab your tricorders as we set out to explore Romulan physiology. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What are Romulans? What do they look like? Since their introduction in the original series, the Romulans have caused chaos in practically every Star Trek episode and film. They are basically villains through the entire galaxy. Now here's the real scoop. Romulans are actually kin to the Vulcans. Some Vulcans disagreed with Surak when he brought about logical reforms on their planet. Wanting to preserve their traditions, a fiercely combative and passionate race, now called the Romulans, rebelled and established their distinct society away from their original home. By the 24th century, the Romulan Star Empire became an important force in the galaxy. But then, disaster struck. Destruction by a supernova led to a mess on Romulus. Things ended up getting even messier when the Romulan Free State took over. Their sun was destroyed, and the Romulans drew nearer to their Vulcan kin. And so it happened that, just around the time when the Vulcans planned their exit, the Romulans entered the Federation. Talk about a strange family reunion! In contrast to the peaceful and logical Vulcans, the Romulans are all about war and emotion. These guys built an empire around these two principles. They were actually one of the few major races in Star Trek who refused to link up with the Federation until their home planet was lost. So there you have it, the Romulans, rebels and warriors with some highly complex family drama. At first glance, Romulans look very, very similar to Vulcans. They've got the same pointy ears and fancy arched eyebrows, not to mention copper-based blood. But here's the kicker, the Romulans have extra V-shaped forehead ridges added to the mix for an extra touch. By the 24th century, Romulans had developed to the point of no longer being seen as Vulcan kin. Their new distinctions were of such great extent that they made Vulcan blood transfusions an absolute no-go. And here is how it gets even more interesting. You had different subtypes among the Romulans. Some of them had those profound forehead ridges, while others looked so much like Vulcans you couldn't tell them apart. Those ridge-bearing Romulans tended to live up north on their planet, so most folks call them northerners. So remember, Romulans and Vulcans might share some genes, but they've got their own unique style going on. It's like a cosmic family reunion where everybody's got their own quirks. Do they have green blood? Alright, now let's get into some Romulan biology. These folks have a heart in a spot that would surprise your average human. It's placed right where you'd expect to find a liver. Talk about mixing things up. And when it comes to their blood, it's a real showstopper. Instead of the red color we humans have, Romulan hearts pump out copper-based green blood. Picture that. It's green when it's all boosted up with oxygen. But here's the cool part. The color of blood in the Star Trek universe can change depending on who's doing the bleeding. Like for other species, it might not be green. So this way, the Romulans certainly stand out in the rest of the universe. So next time you're watching Star Trek and see a Romulan, just remember, their blood's got a color-changing trick. It's all part of what makes them out of this world interesting. Do they spit green acid? Alright folks, let's clear up a little Romulan myth-busting here. Star Trek style. Remember that scene in Picard where a Romulan assassin spits green acid at Dodge? Well, it had some fans thinking Romulans had a crazy acid-spitting biological feature. But hold on to your shock because it's certainly not what it seems. Now here's another shocking fact. This acid-spitting trick actually harks back to an earlier Next Generation episode when Lieutenant Worf spits acid at Dr. Crusher's face. So when Picard dropped, people connected the dots, thinking it was some new Romulan biological feature. But here's the twist. If you watch closely, you'll catch a quick moment where the Romulan bites down on something in their mouth before they spit. It's like a capsule or an implant, probably a last resort weapon. An absolute last ditch move, if you will, to take out their opponents. And here's why it makes sense for Romulans to have sneaky tech like this. They're all about secrets and surprises. So that toxic green acid? Yes, it's just a product of technology, not their biology. There are no acid-spitting Romulans out there, just some high-tech trickery. 
Why do Romulans have pointed ears? Alright, let's talk about Romulans and Vulcans and their family resemblance. So here's what we already know. These guys share some pretty similar physiology because they're basically blood related. That is why both have these cool pointed ears that make them stand out in the Star Trek universe. Now, these pointed ears are like their trademark, a dead giveaway that you're dealing with a Romulan or a Vulcan. It's basically like their signature trait. So when you spot those ears on a character in the Star Trek series, it's like a secret hint that states they're Vulcan Romulan ancestry. So those pointy ears are the telltale sign that they're part of this unique interstellar family. What diseases do they have? Well, Romulans might have their share of unique biology, but guess what? They are not invulnerable to health issues, just like us humans, including some pretty terrible diseases. They have their own set of problems to handle. One of the biggest troublemakers in Romulan health is the Terothka virus. This disease is like the common cold on steroids, but way worse. It's super contagious and can hit Romulans very hard. There are different strains of this nasty flu, and one of them comes with stomach cramps that can make you want to crawl into a black hole and a rash that's just as awful. Alright, now let's talk about a pretty serious disease in the Romulan world, Tuvan Syndrome. This was one nasty neurological disease that mainly messed with Romulans, and it was a really tough cookie to crack. Think of it like a Romulan version of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease in humans, but it didn't hit as fast. When someone got Tuvan Syndrome, it was like a slow, painful journey. They'd start losing their motor skills over a decade or so, and the life expectancy after contracting it was around 20 to 25 years. That's a very long and arduous battle, isn't it? This sneaky disease liked to mess with the facial nerve, causing a bit of a droop and making it tough to move the muscles on the patient's face. Furthermore, it affects the respiratory muscles, raising the risk of breathing issues in the long run. Despite their intense and stoic appearance, even the Romulans had a bunch of health issues that were forced to deal with. They're not immune to the disgusting and dangerous stuff that can plague any other species in the galaxy. Health problems, it seems, are the greatest equalizer in the universe. Are they xenophobic? The Romulan attitude towards other species can best be described as a mixed bag. Xenophobia was a possible side effect of their dedication to cultural preservation. Here's the deal. They did not necessarily hate other races. They really just wanted to keep their Romulanness intact. They had these long stretches of time where they just isolate themselves from the rest of the galaxy. It's like they were building a fortress around their culture. Now, here's where it gets complicated. Although they weren't overly xenophobic, they truly believed they were the top dogs in the galaxy. They had this grand vision that one day the Romulan Empire would rule the whole universe and they didn't mind bossing around weaker worlds that they kind of looked down on. And when it came to tech, they most certainly loved to brag. Romulans had a habit of claiming they invented everything before everyone else, like they were the ultimate pioneers of the cosmos. Plus, they had this territorial streak. Anything they laid their eyes on, they claim as their own. So, Romulans could be a handful, but it wasn't necessarily about hate. It was more about them thinking that they were the cosmic king kings and queens of the universe. Do they have telepathic ability? All right. So here's a bit of a Romulan mystery. Do they have those incredible Vulcan mind powers like telepathy and mind mills? Well, it's been a topic of endless debates, with folks tossing around all sorts of ideas, but mostly the evidence points towards a somewhat uncertain no. Some think it might be because of the minute differences in their genes. Others say it's because of their aggressive culture. Due to their concentration on maintaining an exterior toughness, the Romulans never managed to tap into their mental abilities like the Vulcans. In the 23rd century, Starfleet was puzzled by whether they did in fact possess any telepathic powers but got no clear answer. In 2270, nobody was really sure what was going on, but they still didn't think telepathic Romulans were a thing. Fast forward to 2409, and it turns out some Romulans started showing weak telepathic abilities. They couldn't do mind mills like Vulcans, but they could kind of sense the presence of others around them. Indeed, if they had telepathy, Romulans would employ it a lot differently than Vulcans. Unrelenting in their quest for knowledge and territory, they would use it to further deceive and manipulate. It was actually a pretty great thing that they did not gain access to these mind melding techniques, because Romulans with mind powers? That would be a whole new level of cunning. The Triple Identity Theory Do Romulans have three names in Star Trek? Romulans have this whole naming culture that's a bit like a secret code. They've got three different names depending on who they're talking to. So here's how it works. They've got one name for folks outside their family circle, like outsiders. It's like their public name, the one they'd introduce themselves with at parties and official occasions. Then, there's another name they use among their family, like their inner circle nickname. It was a name that evoked a sensation of warmth and coziness, one that made their close family 
family feel special. The romantic angle here is that they have a third name for their romantic partner. Yeah, you heard that right. Romulan's significant others had their very own designated name. So if you ever meet a Romulan and they give you one of these names, you'll know where you stand in their galaxy of relationships. Romulan culture, hidden aspects and intriguing theories. All right, let's get into the Romulan culture here. So these folks, they're not all about unleashing unrestrained violence like some space brutes. No, they're a bit more cunning. You see, Romulans traded in all-out aggression for a controlled sneakiness. They've got a reputation for being a bit two-faced and the government's actions didn't help that image. Instead of going in guns blazing, they like to play the long game. Romulans were masters of waiting for the right moment to pounce. They try to manipulate their adversaries into making a move that looked like a violation of their trust. That way, they'd have a solid excuse to strike back. And when it came to doing dirty work anonymously, they were pros. They'd hire assassins to do their off-world dirty business. Devious, xenophobic, and a mastery over deception. That's the Romulan way. Compared to humans, these folks deal with things in some very interesting ways that demonstrate their passion. When it came to love, Romulans didn't hold back. If they lost a dear one, they didn't mope around forever. Instead, they believed in honoring that love by loving again, even more profoundly. It's like they believed in turning heart break into a wellspring of deeper love. Now, here's where things get a bit intense. They were all about saving face. They'd rather face death than disgrace. So if a Romulan baby was born with birth defects, some parents would sadly choose to let them go, thinking it was better than wasting resources. Their society had a tight grip with dissent often seen as a big no-no. This led to some severe paranoia among Romulans. You never knew who might be a secret security officer, and that had folks on edge. So, Romulans are passionate and proud, but also a bit intense and cautious. They certainly had their own unique way of looking at the world. Now buckle up for some Romulan quirks. These guys had some traditions that were all their own. First off, there's the Zal Mak. It's a special kind of meditation they do, and they're pretty hush-hush about it. It's like a secret club that only Romulans get to join. Now here's something straight out of a spy movie. Their homes had a fake front door. You know, like a decoy. The real entrance, sneakily hidden in the back. Romulans and their paranoia, right? Oh, and get this. They had this thing where they promised boys and girls to each other from the moment they were born. Talk about long-term planning for love. But wait, there's more. Big blunders in Romulan culture were once met with hefty consequences, namely the death penalty. Clearly, life in their society was not exactly a walk in the park. Before being judged and condemned, Condemned. An individual was given a right of statement. Pleading their case was basically their last chance. Although strange to some, Romulan customs were what made them unique. Can a Romulan have children with humans? Let's talk about Commander Sela. She was a big deal in the Romulan military, and her story is quite the roller coaster. And here's why. Sela was a bit of a unique lady because she was half Romulan and half human. Her life did not exactly begin with a love story. Her mother, Tasha Yar, was a Starfleet officer, while her father was a Romulan general who was pretty much holding her mom hostage. With her daughter, Tasha made an attempt to escape, but unfortunately, their plan was foiled by Sela's cries. Tragically, her mom was executed, but Sela herself was raised in the Romulan way of life. Now, what's really interesting is that, thanks to her mom, Sela had some human traits, like her blonde hair. In fact, she's the first blonde Romulan we ever saw in Star Trek. Talk about standing out in a crowd, right? But to conclude with the answer to our question, it is clearly possible for Romulans and humans to have hybrid children. Marvelous verdict. And there you have it, fellow space explorers. We've delved deep into the fascinating anatomy of the Romulans from the Star Trek universe. Romulans are a truly intriguing humanoid species. From their distinctive pointed ears to their unique green blood, we've uncovered their connection to the Vulcans, their struggles with diseases like Tuvan syndrome, and their enigmatic telepathic potential. But it's not just their biology that sets Romulans apart. Their complex culture, marked by secrecy, manipulation, and a passion for their way of life, adds layers of depth to these interstellar fiends. Now, Thanks to this video, whenever you watch Star Trek, you will have a renewed admiration for the complexity of Romulans. Maybe someday we will be able to uncover more of their hidden secrets among the stars. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!